Alright guys, welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. Last time we left off, we started off with doing the first day of the Brewer Field Study. We arrived in the Courageous, we finished all, the, all of the tasks for the first day, and now I'm not ex actually sure what to do, so I'm guessing on. We are going back to the talk to Elisa's mom or something. Well, at least we finished everything. Yep, that's about it like we can do, I guess. Unless we get interrupted, of course. Well, what are we waiting for? For the loading screen, evidently. Oh, of course, it's these guys. Do you mean what are they doing here? They own the place, kind of. Good idea. Yeah, let's take the escalators, I guess. Or not. Well, I didn't show this off last time, but there is a, actually an elevator over here. It's not like they are wrong. You do look kind of ridiculous. What good name? You can't be serious about this right now. I think it's time to back uh, back get back guys. I think you guys are the one who are making them afraid. Yeah, trust the guys that are frightening um, the railway military police. I mean, I doubt they would You're start quite to... You're correct, of course. Both the Provincial Army and the Railway Military Police have their own roles to fill. 
each important to the Empire. And that's the end of the voice acting. Yeah, they gave Claire some lines for some reason. Must be nice to be well known. It's almost as if they don't want you to investigate. Query for you then. How would you respond if a crisis were to occur in multiple places at the same time? Hey Rufus, you seem to show up wherever we go. Yeah, he sure does. So you are going to answer his question? Ah, Captain Claire Revelt, I presume? It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I've heard much about you. It's an honor, Lord Alborea. Please, no need for formalities between us. Rufus is fine. Still, you seem puzzled as to what I'm doing in Ruhr. Or to be more specific, how I got here. Do I assume correctly? The country's railways are completely under your control. Had I taken a train, you would have known it. And yet, there are no signs I passed through Ruhr Airport either. The truth is more mundane than fantastic. I arrived aboard the Alborea family's private airship, which currently sits just off a highway on the outskirts of the city awaiting my return. I... Blind spots are an unavoidable reality. We all have them. As on the ball as you are, you do well not to overestimate your own superiority. After all, the hardest falls are the ones we don't see coming. I'll be sure to keep that in mind. Now, isn't it time both sides withdrew? And remove those unsightly vehicles from the streets at once. A provincial army must conduct itself with valor and grace at all times. Would you not agree? So I'm guessing the road was blocked off last episode since his airship was there. Oh, so you'll be attending. How nice.
Yeah, he's pretty intense. Yeah, sounds like an idea. It's most likely the Imperial Liberation Front, if I had to guess. Wait, so you live there? Man, I can't believe your family has the top two floors of a world-class high-rise all to itself. Yeah, even high-ranking nobles would trip over themselves to secure a luxury suite like this. <sighs> I was afraid you guys would react exactly like you just did. That's why I just kept my mouth shut. Sure, it's large, but it's so pointlessly large for just two people. And the only servant we have is Sharon. If you have Sharon, that's the only maid you need, even for a place this big. <laughs> you said it. Well, we'll be guests here for the next three days. So, thanks for having us, Elisa. Well, of course. Don't mention it. My, my, my. Is it just me, or do I detect more than a hint of red on Lady Elisa's fair visage? Could she be... embarrassed? Uh, I am not! <laughs> We're here on a field study, so could we at least try to take this a little more seriously? I'll lighten up, Machias. It just wouldn't be a proper field study without one of us getting embarrassed about our family. Welcome home, everyone. Feels nice to be back. I'll just ignore how you popped up to greet us the moment we walked through the door. <laughs> I just couldn't wait to see you. Now, if you'll just follow me, I'll show you inside. Yeah, I can see what she means. Oh. Well, I'm impressed. This is even more grandiose than I'd expected. You can see the whole town out there below. Talk about the lap of luxury. Looks like a comfy place to take a nap. You guys really think so? I've been away from Rua for half a year, so I guess it does feel kind of nice to be home. <laughs> I guess that's natural. I've already finished preparing dinner. Please, let me know whenever you're ready to eat. Thank you. I don't know about all of you, but I'm pretty hungry. What do you say we... Wait, actually we can't, can we? Mother said she'd be eating with us tonight, so we need to wait until she comes home. And there are quite a few things we need to ask her, too. Well, actually, my lady, I'm afraid I received a call from the chairman earlier about that. What? I can guess what this is about.
I'm guessing it's pretty important that we see Ruhr at night time, for some reason. If you wolf down so much food so quickly, you'll get fat. Ah! It's just this once! I eat a balanced diet the rest of the time. But you've been bolting down every course so quickly, I'm surprised you haven't inhaled your napkin. Maybe we're gonna need to rethink your stage outfit for the concert. Crap. I almost forgot about that. If you're worrying about us, you don't need to, you know? I know your mother promised she'd have dinner with us, but we all know she's a busy woman. And she said she'd try to make some time for us tomorrow instead. But still... It's not that it bothers me so much, but she sits on Thor's board of directors. Who's she meeting with that's so important she can't even clear a little time to see us? She got off the Lusitania already, didn't she? I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to say. She's not out on a date with a gentleman or engaging in any lascivious behavior, if that puts your mind at ease. Ugh, that's not what I'm worried about, not even close. Honestly, hearing she was seeing a man might even put my mind at ease. Alisa? Huh, we actually see them write the reports. Oh, well, thank you. You bookworm. Oh yeah, you two still have to work on that, huh? Well, I guess we have the entire mansion to us. Well, I call it a mansion, but really it's more of an apartment. And we can see the entire city from here, and the, well, the ground texture doesn't look that, that great, to be honest. Let's see what do we have over here. I have no idea whose room this is. I'm guessing one of these rooms must be Gwyn's. So we'll be having two songs, just. We'll have to start practicing as soon as we get back, huh? Um, yeah, I don't think I want to see them. Is that like built in? I think we need to change that. Optimal bounce vector, show them titties, are you serious?
Yeah, just make it a bit less revealing. Yeah, I don't think I want to be in a legend in the way you mean it. Oh, there's a nice little garden over here. I'm guessing this is the library. Ah, looks like this room over here is Gwyn's, but it's locked and we can go inside. I'm guessing that's about it for the second floor. Let's take a look at these pictures, why not? Can't really make, make out that one. This one looks interesting. Alright, first floor. All that is left is to talk to Alisa and Fee, I guess. And they have multiple of the same pictures, why not? Nice carpet. Can't really help it. Yeah, watch out what you say around fee. Oh yeah, we can play Blade with everyone, but, well, look at my link levels, I don't really need to do it. Even Crow need reached level 4 by now. That's what you're worried about, huh? Well, we never know. Can't really make out that picture, but I think I can see Elisa in the middle of it. Is this like a telephone or something? Well, not really sure what to do now. I talk to everyone. Oh yeah, you were not with us in the North Highlands. Maybe he'll visit the school festival. Here is progress, I guess. I think we just had to walk down this hallway a bit. Nice 45 degree turn there, or 90 degree, yeah. Well, I guess we have to talk to Sharon.
Jo, was, was? Maybe. But I would not really rub off of her too much. I think you are going a bit too far there. What would she do if Rin actually accepted it? And Alyssa moves to a convenient spot. Does everyone else actually have new dialogue? I guess so. It can't be easy to change your schedule so easily, huh? It must have been pretty important. Yeah, we were just talking about this with Crow. Oh, it's you. Sorry, were you worried? A little, yeah. Seeing you like that just kind of reminded me of that night in Nord. Oh, right. Oh, I'm so pathetic. I keep going on about how I'm going to be independent. But then I get all worked up over something as trivial as this. Seeing the city from above at night is really something, though. And to think, you got to take in a beautiful view like this every night growing up. Yeah, I guess so. It used to be my grandfather, my father, and my mother here. Then after my father died, Sharon joined us. But, through the years, my family has always enjoyed seeing the lighted windows of Ruhr at night. Something that never changed, huh? 
I guess it is to you what Ymir's mountains are to me. <laughs> Maybe every family has something like that. Still, first my grandfather left. And now Sharon and I aren't here most of the time either. Mother just stays here all on her own. Every time I think of that, I just feel like crying. It breaks my heart. I can't understand why she chooses to be so alone. I thought so. You're not just angry at her then. <laughs> well, she gets under my skin, that's nothing new. But if I was in her place, I don't know how I'd cope. I couldn't live like she does, losing herself in her work all alone with no friends or loved ones by her side. She wasn't like that before, back when my dad was still alive. She's always been a career woman, but back then she was kind, funny. She had this warmth, you know? But ever since dad passed away, she hasn't been the same. Work became her life. She pushed grandfather out as chairman, all for what? More work? I've never seen her indulge herself, not even once. If she isn't dining with some business partner, she eats nutrition bars instead of meals. Sharon scolds her for it, but... That's how she is. And that's why I'm scared. I don't want life to just pass her by. That's really sweet, Elisa. Uh, where did that come from? You're always looking out for the people in your life. Even when they get on your nerves, you still care about them. It's like how you and I were at first, or how you were with Laura and Fee. Heck, I still remember how you told me off for hurting my sister's feelings. You've been keeping an eye out for Milliam all this time, too. And you should know that we're all really grateful to you for it. Especially me. <sighs> I'm worried about what's happening here in Ruhr, too. This is your home, and your mother might be caught up in whatever's going on. I think we should look into it. What do you say? What? But with all our field study tasks, where would we find the time? Why not do it while we're out handling those? Making some headway is always better than making none, right? I mean, I'm not the only one who feels this way. Everyone else does too. Fee cares. So does Elliot. Machias does too. Even Crow's been concerned about you. We can use our time in the city to poke around and find out more about what's going on. You know, kind of like we always do. Well... If you say so, but I'll save the thanks for later. Hmm, I doubt Sharon will tell us anything, no matter how much we pester her. But I'll ask around and see if anyone I know has any idea what might be going on. It shouldn't be too late to give some of them a call at least. All right, I'll leave the info gathering to you. Once we get our task list tomorrow, we can discuss how we want to do this. All right. Anyway, I think I'm going to start calling my contacts. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. If I were you, I wouldn't go around stroking girls' heads like that. I mean, you don't just go whispering sweet nothings into any girl's ear, do you? This isn't so different, really. Huh? Oh, I guess you're right. Sorry, it's something I always did to my sister when she was feeling down. But now that you mention it, she did seem to resent it more as she got older. But when I stopped doing it, she called me insensitive and got all upset anyway. I think your sister and I would have a lot to talk about. But anyway, I'll see you later. All right. Well, she seems like she's feeling better now. 
I just hope our efforts will turn up some good leads. You know, these scenes with Alisa, uh, I really wish they would have just committed to one girl and not have these choices you can make throughout the game. It feels like they just shorn that in since, well, every game just did it at that time. Persona 5 and Persona 4 and everything else. They just give you the, all these choices with different girls and then they give you scenes like these and you feel bad for choosing other girls. They really should have just chosen Alisa and gone with that. Huh? Call functionality works here? I guess it would, seeing as we're right in the headquarters of the company that built these. Maybe it's the instructor. Hello. Reen Schwartz are speaking. Oh, good. It went through. Glad I was able to get your number from Milliam. Is this... Captain Claire? It is. I apologize for calling so late. Are you free right now? Yeah. What's up? There's something important I'd like to discuss with you. But it's a matter best discussed in person. Would it be possible for you to meet me in the city? Sooner is preferable. Like, right now? Um, would this happen to be related to our field study? Technically speaking, yes. But with the Provincial Army on alert, traveling in a large group would draw too much suspicion. That's why I decided to contact you directly. You are the team leader. People keep saying that, but I never recall agreeing to it. But, sure, I guess. I'll head out right now. Where should I meet you? Go to the upper level. On the south side of the elevated walkway, you'll see a bar called F. It's a quiet, upscale establishment. The perfect place for a private discussion. A bar called F on the south side of the upper level. Got it. I'll head there right away. I'll be waiting. I'm not on a schedule or anything, though, so there's no need to rush. You've got time. And, by the way, I'd rather you didn't mention any of this to Elisa. Huh? Why? Because what I want to discuss with you happens to involve the Reinford Company. But I'll leave it to your discretion. Anyway, you know where to find me. It feels a bit cruel to keep only Elisa out of the loop. But it sounds like it's pretty important. I think it'd be better to go now and tell everyone else about it later. Well, I guess it's time to sneak out of here. I wondered what's that all about. Looks like Alisa is on the phone too, as she said she would be. I believe it. Alright, well, I guess nobody is around, so we should be able to leave without notice. Huh. I need to leave, but I don't want to leave the front door unlocked. But if I ask someone to lock up behind me, they'll want to know where I'm going. I guess I might have to tell Elisa where I'm going after all. Will you be stepping out? Uh, Sh Sharon? I couldn't even tell she was there. <laughs> There's no need to explain. That glimmer in your eyes tells me all I need to know. Not to worry, Master Reen. Your secret's safe with me. 
So enjoy your night to the fullest. Wait, what? You have a date with a fetching young lady, don't you? I'll make sure no one notices your absence, especially my lady. Just be certain you're back by morning. I assure you, I'm not that lucky. I just got word that this acquaintance of mine was visiting Ruhr, and they wanted to catch up a bit, so I was going to slip out and see them for a little while. <laughs> Very well then, I'll lock up behind you. I'd also be glad to help you build an ironclad alibi. No one would think twice, even if you were to stay out all night. I appreciate the thought, but I don't think that'll be necessary. Anyway, I'll be back later. Of course. Take care. I have no idea how she got out before us, seeing how she was just in the washing room. But I have learned not to question these things. still see quite a few people working. I guess it comes with the territory, working for the world's largest industrial manufacturer. Eh, Alright, it's time to take a night stroll. What the? What was that? Oh, hey Fee, that's not really the best hiding place. Whoops. I thought so. Hey! Why are you running away? Seriously? I'm surprised you noticed me. I was trying pretty hard to be stealthy. <sighs> How long were you hiding there? Wait. Have you been trailing me ever since I left the penthouse? Well, I saw you slip out. So, where are you going? Are you really headed out for a late night romantic rendezvous? What kinds of lies has Sharon been feeding you anyway? Okay, here's what's up. That totally sounds like a rendezvous. Sorry, I shouldn't have interfered. Whoa, whoa, it's not like that. <sighs> well, you know everything I know about it now. Why don't you come too? You sure? No reason not to. It sounded like whatever info she's got has something to do with our field study. And honestly, I wasn't all that keen on having a one-on-one -on -one with a military officer to begin with. Gotcha. But first, I want to walk around a bit. After we've been walking around all day? Whenever I come to a new city, I always like to get a feel for what it's like during the day and the night. I feel kind of uneasy if I don't. Oh, right. It must be a Jaeger thing. All right, I'll join you for a little stroll. I don't want to keep the captain waiting too long, though. Will once around town be enough? That'll be fine. Okay, let's roll. And yeah, you have to um, find Fee before leaving the Reinford building, I think. Or maybe you can go back inside. But whatever, you, you you do have to find her to get... By the way, did you happen to run into Sharon on your way out? She saw me leaving, but she just let me go. Hmm. Even the best maids aren't that all-knowing. You have to find her to get to AP. And the 50 extra link points, but th those don't really matter. But talking to old man Ulu here gives us one of the Carnelia books. Well, I mean the Red Moon Rose series. We already got all the Carnelia books, what am I talking about? 
And before we head to the bar, we do have to do a hidden side quest. Yeah, great, more little kids. I see where this is going. Well, if it were in the middle of the night... Well, it, as long as he's in Ruhr, I guess it shouldn't be a problem. That would be pretty bad. Alright, let's try the upper level then. Wow, this city's got a nice feel at night. Yeah, it's really pretty. Here we go with sensing stuff again. Uh, to find the little kid, he's in this box. Don't frighten the little boy. Don't think too hard about it. Alright, give me my reward. Oh, thank you. The game has been giving me human materials as reward. I really wish it would stop that since monsters have been dropping it non-stop. Well, that should be about everything as to as for side stuff, but eh, let's take a look at the kids that went back home. Grandpa Jackass. Yep, you are stupid.
Yep, you sure can. Well, I guess it's time about time we head to the F bar. Still a weird name. This is where Claire said to meet her, right? Yeah, this looks like the place. Guess it's pronounced if. I have no idea why the game asks you asks you this. I um, you can still back out. You don't don't even go inside. You just okay. Really, the point of no return is talking to Claire. All right, now to find Captain Claire. Oh, wow. sense that she wouldn't come here in uniform. The charms of an older woman, eh? I think I'll manage. Sorry I kept you waiting. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Oh. Hi. Yeah, I kind of ran into her on the way here and told her she could come along. That's not a problem, is it? Not at all. I assume you've been surveying the town while acting as Rain's bodyguard? Sounds like you've done your homework. The intelligence division has told me a little. Anyway, I think we might attract a little too much attention if we stay at the counter. What do you say we get a table for three? It's good to see you both. I think this may be the first time we've been able to have a proper conversation. You may be right. I was hoping I'd get the chance to sit down and talk with you too, actually. Oh? You sure you don't want me to go? That's not what I mean. I have a lot of questions. Like, about why Milliam transferred into our class, for example. But there's one really fundamental question that would go a long way toward answering a lot of the others. What exactly is it that you and Chancellor Osborne are trying to accomplish? Let's look at that standoff at the Provincial Army earlier this evening. It's hard for me to feel much sympathy for them after they drove armored cars right into the middle of the city. But maintaining order in the provinces is generally accepted to be the duty of the provincial armies. Maybe it's just me, but it seemed an awful lot like you were just trying to provoke them by belittling their authority. It did look like your people were picking a fight. Viewed without the proper context, I can see how it might look like that. But right now, the factional conflict in the Empire is nearly at its breaking point. Crossbell is buzzing with talk of independence, and Calvert is still weathering its immigration disputes. In such volatile times, there's a very real need to create a far more expansive network to help maintain public order. The only organizations that are up to the challenge are the Railway Military Police and the Intelligence Division. That may be the case. Still, your boss is the one making those conflicts worse. I can't deny that, but at the very least, the Chancellor is acting with a sense of integrity. He hasn't stooped so low as to give aid to terrorists unlike some others I could name. I want you to at least understand that. Wait, so... Wow, she really said it. So the noble faction's been the one backing the terrorists, huh? I'm afraid there's no longer any doubting it. 
We've all but confirmed the involvement of Duke Cayenne, the most prominent representative of the four great houses. The three airships the Imperial Liberation Front have been using have been traced back to Ordis as well. I'd wondered how they got their hands on those. I've heard the Duke is just a gaudy old man, but... Eustace's brother came to pick him up in Legram, didn't he? That's what Toval told us. And now, Rufus just so happens to pop up on another of his secret trips. Captain Clare, what's going on in Ruhr? And how are Elisa's family and the Reinford Company involved? I guess it's time to get to the matter I called you here for in the first place. The Railway Military Police is currently weighing the possibility of a forced inspection of Reinford's first factory. Sounds serious. The first factory belongs to one of Reinford's major divisions, right? Correct. It's one of the main divisions and handles the bulk of the company's iron and steel processing, among other things. They're also currently under suspicion of something I'm not at liberty to discuss with you right now. The two of you are aware that project management at Reinford is split up across several major branches, right? It is? And on top of that, she's got her hands on the development of our Arcus units, too. It's way too much work for one person. How many projects does Mother have under her wing right now? Well, I'm afraid I can't give a simple answer to that. But suffice to say, the Chairman only knows about a small number of the projects in development by the Reinford Group. Well, lately, the Directors have. Come to think of it, I overheard Elisa and Sharon talking about something like that. For years now, Reinford has been the Empire's heavyweight when it comes to heavy industry and manufacturing. The company is split into different divisions that handle things like steel production, railways, weaponry, and tools. The problem is that those divisions have simply become too large. Large enough to have their own internal allegiances, some to the nobles, with others supporting the reformist faction. Uh, are you serious? So even companies are taking sides. I'm sure Arena Reinford is aware of this to at least some extent as the company's chairman. But the self-supporting accounting system she introduced has the side effect of granting each division a long leash. Because of that, I doubt even she has a full grasp of the situation. So, the first factory you guys have your sights set on for that inspection is aligned with the noble faction, I assume. You assume correctly. And the provincial army is doing everything it can to stop us from carrying out that investigation. That's what led to this evening's quarrel. I imagine Chairman Arena is currently doing her utmost to rein in all the divisions and get them back in line. The thing is, when she seized control of the company five years ago, she had to rely on support from both sides. Being indebted to them like that, I have my doubts she'll be able to target the underlying problem. It's sounding shadier by the minute. You can say that again. The situation seems even more dire than I thought. And while all this is going on, the factional conflict keeps burning hot across the rest of the Empire. I've told you as much as I can right now. Tensions are mounting all over the country, but Ruhr has an extra fuse of its own. Try to gain an understanding of the crisis unfolding here, then do your best to stay out of it. Whatever other lessons Class 7 takes away from this field study, I hope that ends up on the list. <laughs> I wish you the best with the remainder of your field study. Please have the bill sent to the Railway Military Police Branch Office in Ruhr Station. Certainly. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Wait! The bill! Looks like she just picked up our tab. She gave us some good intel, too. For free, even. Uh, I can't just go running after her now. Looks like we owe her one. So, you like the mature type, huh? She's sorta like Sarah. Except responsible and composed. 
You can say that again. Oh. Must be yours. Hello? Reen Schwarzer speak. Reen? What are you doing? Oh, it's just you, Elisa. Well, what do you mean, it's just you? Is it true some girl invited you out for a night on the town? Whoa, hold on. A late night date? I thought you only had eyes for me, Reen. <laughs> anyway, good job, kiddo. You better spill all the details later, huh? He'll do no such thing! Now, now, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. He was with him, too. Still, it was rash of you to go out on your own without at least consulting us. Ready to head back? Yeah, I think that'd be for the best. Yeah, they screwed up Machias's voice there. Keep up the good work. Time has come for Shaimu and Crossbell. Now you will show me the feather to witness our conviction. Hmm. As you wish. We'll hit him so hard, they'll be picking up the pieces for weeks. You heard the boss, man. Tomorrow's a red letter day for us. A real do or die moment in every sense of the word. All our preparations will be rewarded soon, when we sweep in and take the Chancellor's head. Keep your eyes on the prize, and give it all you've got! Yeah! Someone is pumped. so fresh, especially for a city with this many factories. Must be because we're up in the mountains. I'll say, compared to the capital, the air quality is pristine. <laughs> well, the capital does have a few hundred thousand more people living there. Uh, sure is a nice day today, isn't it, Elisa? <laughs> Not as nice as last night must have been. I told you, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll bet you are. I cannot believe you. After all those things you said to me last night, you go rushing out to meet another girl. Ooh, the skies might be clear, but I'm sensing a stormy forecast today. Well, all things considered, even if we assume Captain Claire is trustworthy, I'm not sure how wise it was to go out on your own. I know, I know. In hindsight, I regret keeping it to myself. Still, it was pretty bold of Captain Claire to show up alone to meet Reen. Even dressed down, I wouldn't have thought she'd go out alone with the Provincial Army on patrol. I'm guessing she's more than strong enough to handle herself. Not sure what her weapon of choice is, though. Ah, I wish I could have seen her all dolled up, though. But she was a real knockout. Come on, that would put a spring in any man's step. I don't blame you for sneaking out alone. Oh! No! It's not like I knew she was going to show up wearing a cocktail dress, I swear! You seemed pretty taken by her when she showed up yesterday, though. And your eyes were glued to her right up until she left the scene. Oh, really? So while we were enjoying a quiet evening, you were out carousing with a beautiful woman, were you? You lucky son of I mean for shame, Reen! We're here representing the Academy on a field study! 
I swear, you guys are just making things up at this point. But thanks to the information I got from her, we have a pretty good idea what's going on here in Ruhr. And now that we know, we should be able to do something about it. What do you think, Elisa? Yeah, I'm in. So in short, the first factory did something to catch the eye of the railway military police, prompting an inspection. And all the while, the provincial army has been here blatantly trying to prevent them from doing that? Let's not forget that the first factory is run by none other than the noble faction. I know that the divisional directors have been operating without much in the way of executive oversight for years now. But Mother always allowed it. She thought that encouraging competition among the divisions would yield more innovations. I never thought that'd lead to something like this. Seems like the lesser of two evils. By the way, hearing about the first factory made me curious. Do the other divisions have their own political allegiances? Well, to give you a basic idea... This is a bit oversimplified, of course. Divisions are made up of many people, and they all have their own opinions. But the positions of each division's directors are clear as day, though. The first and second factories in particular have had a pretty fierce rivalry going on between them for years. But even still, I wouldn't have expected the first factory to do something flagrant enough to prompt a military inspection. Neither would I. All right, we're gonna do whatever it takes to get to the bottom of this. And when we tie this up all nice and neat for her, even my mother will have to admit she's grateful to us. Sounds like a plan. That's the spirit. Offhand, I'd say this falls under the scope of our field study, too. Thanks, everyone. Sounds like we're in for a ride. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at the field study tasks Sharon gave us for today. Looks like once again, only one required request. And once again, it's just a monster extermination. Yeah, looks like we'll be getting a new gun. And once again, we have to find a missing cat. Yeah, I think we can handle these. It's still 8 a.m., so we have plenty of time to work our way through the list. And while we're doing that, we can ask the people we meet about how things stand between Reinford's divisions. Look alive, everyone. It's time to get to work. Right. Roger. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I guess we just head over to the missing cat's owner. Milk, vanilla, really? Also, who the fetch names their cat Milk? Oh, you are Mint's mother. I guess the name makes sense. Oh, by the way, if you had come in here last night, the pot would have been on the floor. Uh, well, let's say the apple does not fall for far from the tree. She had a bit of a cooking accident. Also, that's how your cat got away.
Well, of course you would. Well, hopefully. Well, as she said, she likes to crawl under things, so a bench would be ideal. A bench like this one. I mean, Fee is the cat expert, maybe we should leave this to her. And of course, finding her once is not enough. I think if I go to the RF store, it should be a faster way to find her. And, and once again, she's under a bench. At least I think it's a she. You guys really suck at this, huh? No, it does not. Oh, you guys are playing hide and seek again. Well, the first factory is owned by the noble faction, basically. And the cat did not go that far. Was that jump really necessary? Also, I think she just went into the station. I guess we somehow narrowed it down to this one. It's not like it's a challenge to find her, she's on the map. Well, it did right now, so I guess he's right. Yeah, great. Well, 
Let's take a look at them, I guess. Oh, 40 CP, actually, that's not bad. Yeah, I don't blame her. Yeah, let's take a look at this gun problem that this guy is having. You are a guy and you are named Sandy. Well, we do have three gun users in our party. How convenient that we exactly have those types of guns as weapons. Why exactly the dancing owls? Okay, just kill 10 of them. Alright, that's easy enough. Just go with it, it will be faster this way. Uh, let's go for Crows, since I do have him equipped and his gun is pretty good. If you had picked um, Fee, she would have gotten one that has a 10% chance of in inflicting faint. Uh, I mean that, and Mach Machias is, is the faint one. But Crows is the fire and ice, which can inflict freeze and burn. And it actually is automatically equipped on Go. Eh, let's just do it really quickly, it won't take long. We can do this later, since the game will direct us this way anyway. But, might as well get it right now. And we have to kill these guys. Now's our chance! We can do this! Here we go! Oh, the game exchange Machias for... <sighs> right. Bad game.
Okay, I guess this will take a bit longer now. I'm just going to use force plus domination. I don't even think I need domination. It's a man strong. I'm the total package. And I'm going to restore um, <laughs> Rose CP with Alyssa. You don't need to keep count. The game will tell you once you have killed enough of them. Advantages are my turn. Now I got you. Go. Gotcha. I can do this. Oh, thanks. thanks. My turn. See, I don't slack off all the time. Three more to go. I think this is the best spot since it's really easy to respawn them. Advantages are okay. Now. My and turn. there are exactly three. It's my turn. Oh, thanks. thanks. My turn. Yeah, you're done. See? I don't slack off all the time. Great. Alright, that should be all of them. Thank you, Turbo Mode, for your existence. Alright, we are done. I hope we get to keep the guns. And I say too, since Crow does use dual pistols. And this is the reason why I did not upgrade Crow's guns, since, well, he does get a new one. Yeah, don't sweat it. Alright, let's take a look at those accessories that we got. It's okay, I wouldn't put it on besides the one that increases the, the, your EP by 100 and arts by 25. Eh, I might as well upgrade Alisa's weapon. Since I, since I do want to go to the RF store anyway. I'm going to buy, buy a Maelstrom to make my life easier. Since this next encounter is really annoying. I did do all the requests, hopefully. Yep, looks like it. All that is left is the required one. Back at the Norsha Highway. This one's all ours. I'll handle it. I already showed off these guys, but I still have to analyze them. I can do this. Let's leave it 
to me. My turn. All right. All right, let's keep on moving. More tomatoes, never hurts. But if I'm really going to use them, and plus we can just buy them. Enemy sighted, go! Okay. One. Now, I've got you! My turn! Right! Yeah, sure, why not? Let's show up Maelstrom. Leave it to me! I'll handle it. My turn! Huh? Not really flashy, but it gets the job done. Yep, that's why. I'm guessing this is a bit of an extra dialogue if you came here ye yesterday. And it's a really annoying one. Well, it's only annoying because it has r a lot of HP. Weak to fire, huh? Well, it's your unlucky day. Let's go! My turn! Now! Got it! I'll handle it. Got it! You know, I still have not shown off the burst My turn. mode when you reach 5 points. I just remembered it. Oh, by the way, most of my characters can inflict peace. That is a reason for Leave that. It to me. Go get him, got him. Okay. Got it. I've got you. <laughs> is everyone okay? That's by treasure. Really, an attack three? That's the best you can give me, game. Now's our chance. Let's get okay. him. I feel like I'm saying that a lot lately. It's my turn. All right. I'll handle it. <laughs> Is everyone okay? Eh, these guys don't really aren't really giving me a lot of EXP, so let's just go around them. Up, oh, there he is, the stupid Hydra. Well, he can inflict poison, but that really doesn't matter a whole lot. Oh great, the camera freezing turned me around. That's just wonderful. Alright! Right! 
Okay. Now, I've got you. Go. Right. <laughs> that takes care of them. All right, might as well show off Mobius. Why not? Um, really, don't give it to Elisa most of the time since. She has better buffs like Heavenly Gift and stuff like that. And wasting your first turn on buffing. Yeah, I mean you should use your first turns to buff with every character as much as you can. For most bosses. As I said he can inflict poison but I don't really care about it. The most Annoying part about these guys, Watch out. They are, there are three one. of them, of course. My and well, they have almost 70,000 HP, so yeah, this will take a while. Ooh, let me use the Tetra Gelatos, huh. why not? Thanks. Thanks. I'll handle it. Since Alisa can be targeted by the Shining affected whichever craft that, that serves them. I, I can't remember it off the top of my head. I'm going to use Shining on her. It's my turn. Oh, a zero art. Yeah, I'm going to use Maelstrom. Huh. I normally would have put her on the CP regeneration. Go. All right, let's do this. So these guys are susceptible to freeze and uh, burn. That's mostly my strategy for them. As soon as they get nice and close to each other. And of course I'm going to use my s class since, I mean, look at their, their HP, this will take forever otherwise. It's my turn. The Heavenly Gift, that's the name. Let's see if I were to use Cross Raven, the domination effect would be activated, and I don't really want to abuse it. Bang, bang, bang! My turn. Ta! Now's a chance. Gotcha. Right. Let's heal up. Hang in there. Well, thanks. thanks. Okay. And they are nice and close for my bullet cyclone. And this is burst. Yeah, it does a pretty good amount of damage. I think I'm going to leave one of them alive, so I can link link bang, it bang, to that. Now. Go. You're done. My turn. Now, I got you. It's my turn. Eh, my boss should wear off, but I don't really care my at turn. this point anymore. Go. Gotcha. You're finished. Okay. Now. I've got you. Leave it. Go get him. 
Right. Now. Broken. Good job, Lisa. Well, you're easy to work with. Ooh, we reached level five. How oh, nice. Nicely done. Success. Yeah, more of that. <laughs> I did it! And the Liotla Nocturne Bell. An A plus outcome. It inflicts sleep and nightmare. Pretty good. Alright, well, yes, we'll head back, but let me just quickly change up my equipment since Wing did reach level 5, and uh, I don't really have any use for it right now. I don't even know what I should give Machias. Sure, have this one. I don't really care about any of them. Eh, there are some crates back there, but I'm not going to go out of my way to get them. Let's see here, before you enter the city make sure to save, especially after that boss fight, and um, equip faint protection. By which I mean evergreens. And which is the other one. Um, Metal Fortitude. And for Alisa I guess I'm going to go with the Grey Locket. That can't be good. Uh oh, danger music. Arcade, Arcadism, sir. Huh? Well, seeing that everyone else is useless besides us. Eh, too bad we are going in. Count on us. It's 
It's a giant robot. Guess why I equipped faint protection. Yep, it looks a lot bigger. This guy is actually pretty tough, and by tough I don't, don't mean oh, difficulty. By tough I mean it's pretty um, durable. But for now, the best thing we could do is probably freeze it. But sadly, of course, the one person who can most likely freeze it, Crow, does not get a turn. At least I'm just going to give everyone okay. the um, what's it called insight, and after that I'm going to switch her out for Elliot so I can unbalance this guy more there easily. Go. Yeah. Got it. You can actually build okay. up your EXP bonus gauge pretty good with this guy since um, he has a whole lot of HP around 100,000. And you can get around to the 3.2 multiplier. And of course you can freeze him. Get it? It's my turn. Light. Freezing right now is better than burn since it does um, steal his turn. Go. And it does deal a fair amount of damage. And um, you can't faint him, don't even try. My turn. One, two. But Bullet Cyclone can delay him. Now. I've got you. Leave it to me. Freeze! <laughs> Get and of course since I froze him after burning him, his um, burn effect went away. But after I unfroze, what, what just happened there? Oh, Keep I see. Um, Gross freeze right. attack didn't work, but his fire and ice gun actually um, burned him. Okay. Sorry, would you mind? I'll try at least. Oh, and be careful with those 50% HP recovery bonuses on the um, left side. Don't let it get to him. Analyzing enemy attack patterns. Actually, maybe you want to if you want to for a high link bonus, ex um, bonus experience. Okay. Okay, unbalancing him should be a lot easier now. One, two. Yeah. I'm done. Got it. I'll back you up. My turn. All right, I think I'm going to fast forward from here on out, here on, since it's going to be mostly this. Now's a chance. Gotcha. I'll handle it. Now, I'll pick you up. Go. Go. Gotcha. Oh no, you don't. Oh, of All course, right. Elliot ha just had to get fainted. Hang on, Elliot. I'm getting to you. Ha. I do want to exchange you back for Alisa. <laughs> Thanks. Hm. Sorry. Can you handle this? I'll handle this. Broken. I'll handle it. Now, I've got you! Here we go! Go! Gotcha! My turn! Go! My turn! Got it! I've got you! I can do this! Light! Let's get the CP regeneration back up. My turn! Go! Go! Gotcha! Okay. My turn! Now's a chance! Gotcha. I'll handle it. Got it! I've got you! My turn! Yeah, this might take a while. Now! Got it. Here we go! Alright! Eh, yeah, screw it. I can do this! I'll handle it. Got it! I've got you! Leave it to me! Just speeding it up a bit. Now! Got it! I can do- Go! I'll handle it. 
handle it. Now, I've got you! Leave it to me! I can do... Okay. My turn! Leave it to me! I can do this! Now! Broken. Okay. Now, I've got you! Here we go! I'll... My turn! Go get him! Okay. Got him! I've got you! My turn! Now's a gotcha. chance! Right! Tur now! Broken. My turn! Now! Got him! My turn! Go! I can do this! Tur go! Broken. Okay. Alright! Here we go! Burn! Go! Gotcha! I'll handle it. Got it! I've got you! Right! Tur yep, that sure took a while. But I should be getting a fair amount of XP experience points. If I had tried, I could have gone to 9999, but eh, it took too long. I did it! <laughs> I did it! Success! Please hold your applause. <laughs> I did it! An A plus outcome. How about we get out of the burning building first of all? Well, they are sure more competent than the provincial army, I give them that. No kidding. Cool voice. Oh, come on, we had to help. Agreed.
Yeah, how did they sneak that inside? Wow, that's pretty far advanced, huh? And no one bothered to check the containers for three months. It has been just sitting there. What's wrong? It looks like it's not over just yet. Or we could grab one of the Red Moon Rose series books first of all, which I'm of course going to do. Oh, or not, guess I can't do that just yet. Okay again, I'm playing by your rules. Actually, uh, am I sure about this? Okay, I guess, yeah. I thought we could get it right now, but I guess it's later. Ugh, every minute we spend here, things are getting worse for the miners. Stay calm, Elisa. Yeah, the railway military police are on their way, after all. Let's at least try and get a look at what's going on. But man, if terrorists really were planning to blow up the mine... It would shake the very foundations of the Empire. Oh. Well, we can't let that happen now, can we? That looks like a strong one. Be careful! Did they block off the entrance? That can't be good. Looks like the provincial army is getting in the way.
Yeah, what the fetch are you doing? If the provincial army is really working with the terrorists, I'm guessing they are working with them for some reason. Well, we discussed this yesterday with Claire. Well, to start with, we need to work out exactly what's going on here. If it's true that the terrorists are working with the noble faction, then it seems likely their aim is to eliminate the evidence of whatever they've been hiding in the first factory. But did they really have to go this far? The Iron Mine is owned by His Majesty the Emperor himself, right? That's right. The province of Nortia is tasked with managing it while Reinford mines, refines, and processes the iron. And iron is the single most vital natural resource to this nation's continued survival. If this isn't resolved quickly, it's going to deal a heavy blow to the entire country, including the nobles themselves. So I guess the question is just whether the noble faction and the terrorists realize that or not. Sounds to me like they're a pretty divided bunch as it is. Yep. The terrorists seem like they're basically all commoners too. They're only cooperating because they both see the Chancellor as a common enemy. And if that's the case, it seems pretty likely that what they're doing here is related to that somehow. Sounds like someone started the party without me. Angelica! You came too, George? Yo, figured you'd show up eventually. Well, we had to test the sidecar, obviously. Spike is just full of surprises. We made the trip to Ruhr in seven hours. So, speed-wise, we're looking great. Comfort, though, we're gonna have to tweak a few things. I swear, you two never change. Kinda figured Toho wouldn't be able to make it, too. Yeah, she's working on gathering a boatload of information, though. She said she'd be in touch if she finds anything out. Well, <laughs> that's reassuring, at least. Um, could someone tell me what's going on? You seem to be hot on the trail of something, but I'm not sure it's the same thing we're investigating. Does this have something to do with those family affairs you told me you were worried about? Yeah, it does. I had some nagging suspicions about it. Unfortunately, my hunch turned out to be right on the money. Hold on. Isn't the director of the first factory... My dear Uncle Heidel Rogner, yeah. Seems like it might do us both some good to swap info. How about it? Now let's find a better place to talk. They're dumping iron onto the black market? Yeah. The amount of steel they're producing doesn't quite match up with the amount of iron ore being mined. That's been the case for quite a few years now. 
Officially, the reason given is that the purity of the ore being mined is lower now than it used to be. But if you look at what's coming out of the mine, there's no evidence of that. Well, that would explain why the figures don't add up. And because they were feeding the raw iron onto the black market rather than the finished steel... That makes it a lot harder to notice when a little goes missing here and there. Man, Toa put all the pieces together on her own? I'd expect no less from my beloved Toa. She poured over everything. Reinford's yearly sales figures, government reports of the mine's productivity, you name it. That's how she picked up on the discrepancy. She's really something else. Iron ore being sold off the black market, accounting sheets that don't add up. George, how much iron ore is unaccounted for, roughly speaking? Do you know? Assuming for a moment that all the missing iron was refined into steel, how much steel would we be looking at? This is just a bit of speculative math on my part, but I'd say somewhere in the neighborhood of 100,000 torum, which is enough to build 2,000 oxen tanks. 2,000? That's practically an army. The Saxon iron mine is a pillar of the Empire's economy. The amount of iron they pull out of there is almost ridiculous. Even if you pocket a small amount every year, it's going to add up to a lot of iron real quick. But what are they planning to do with all of it? Is the noble faction trying to make their own tanks in secret? They couldn't even if they wanted to. Only the second factory has the knowledge and equipment to make tanks. And not only does the second factory have close ties with the Imperial Army, it also leans toward the reformist faction. You need all kinds of complicated technology to make even a basic tank. It's not as simple as just grabbing some steel, some blueprints, and some grease and getting to work. So what does that leave them? Selling the iron to another country for profit? I don't know how likely that is. Seems like deals that big would be too easy to trace. Okay, so setting aside the ore itself for a moment, now that you know this, and given what's happening in Ruhr right now, what were the two of you planning on doing? Oh. It's pretty simple. My uncle oversees the first factory, and the provincial army is blockading the mine. There's no way my family isn't involved. On the other side, you've got all the miners just trying to do their jobs who got dragged into this whole mess. I'm a Rogner. I might not be a great daughter, but there's no way I'm gonna let this go on without putting up a fight. Angie. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're seriously gonna go talk to your old man about this? <laughs> Hell no. Like he'd even listen to a word I said. Same goes for the Provincial Army. I'd just be wasting my breath. That's why I'm planning on sorting out this mess myself. I used to work part-time in the mine. I know the place like the back of my hand. As long as I can find my way inside, I think I can handle the terrorists well enough. Uh, I figured you'd say something like that. Honestly, does nothing faze you? In that case, I'd like to ask that you take us along. Uh, we can look at this as a test of how to best respond to a sudden crisis. Looking at it from that perspective, I think it fits neatly within the scope of our field study. You? Yeah, after hearing all that, I don't want to let them have their way. Agreed. I'm with Angelica here. My family's involved in this too. I feel like I have a duty to do something about it. Thanks. Truth be told, I was kind of hoping you'd back me up anyway. Whatever help you can give, I'll take it. <laughs> well, that's that. The next thing we need to consider is how to slip into the mine without the provincial army taking notice. At the very least, Angie should be able to get the officer in charge to talk with her, but... So, what, we sneak inside while she's distracting them? I don't know, that sounds a little overly simplistic to work. Leave finding our way in to me. If anyone's good at cutting red tape, it's my mother. Maybe she could help us out. She could, but would she? 
Well, if you think so. All right, I'll leave securing an alternate route to you then. For now, I'm gonna see if I can find out anything else about my family's or the provincial army's involvement here. George, give Toa a call and see if you can find out what the Imperial government is doing about all this. Gotcha. I'll see if I can turn up any machinery that might be useful too. <laughs> this is starting to feel like last year's field studies all over again. Alright, looks like we have a plan. You should be used to this by now. But of course, before we head to the Reinford offices, we do have to pick up the Red Moon Rose series. It's one of the last chapters. But will Alisa's mom be able to help us out? Will we make it in time to save the miners? Find out in the chapter 6 finale of Let's Play The Legend of Heroes Threads of Cold Steel. For now, thank you for tuning in, and till next time, have a good one.